Hello there. Well, I've managed to survive another winter and escape from the house during what has been a pretty bad period of weather here in Scotland. Um, I mean, it's winter, it's not been bad because of a lot of snow, it's just been very wet and very windy and just very hard to get out and uh, do stuff. So, um, as I say, I've managed to escape and I'm ready to do stuff. I'm in Inverary and um, I, I was actually going to start this video at the end of the pier there. I thought I planned it all, but the pier is shut. Apparently, it's starting to collapse in places, and you know, if it's, you know, it's not just disappointing for me in this vi video. It must be disappointing for the whole town because I imagine that's the only way in and out of the town uh, via the water. You know, and uh, somebody said that uh, somebody perhaps uh, bought it and we're going to be doing it up or something. But um, like a lot of these things, I think it's probably laying for too long in that state. You know, you've got the vital spark boat there, and just wandering on the pier and having a closer look at the boat is part and parcel of being an Inverary. You know, so hopefully that'll get sorted pretty soon. Anyway, we'll have a just a, a brief wander around the town, um, then we'll head up by the castle and climb a small hill by an old tower uh, that will give us um, pretty decent views back down towards the town and the, the whole area in general. So if you're ready for an adventure, well, let's go. Well, burn it off, Jake it open. 
it's definitely spring. I can feel the heat in the sun. Beautiful. This is what Inverary is all about, and indeed, this is what the whole of Scotland's all about, and what invariably attracts hordes of visitors each year. It's just the utter beauty of the place. And I've come along the front a wee bit because I, I knew there was there's a bench just up there, and I knew I would get a, a good vantage point and a good view from here. It's a new year. New boots, and I'm absolutely champing at the bit to get out and kind of explore lots of things in Scotland. So remember to click that subscribe button, and we'll we'll do all this exploring together. I've just been cooped up in the house. I suspect like everybody else because of the weather over the past. I mean, I was going to say weeks. It's felt like months. You know, I haven't been out properly for a long time, and I feel a wee bit like a a lamb in spring and I want to go skipping and hopping and jumping all over the shop. <laughs> I might actually take this snood off, snood off because there is quite a bit of uh, heat in the sun. You know, one thing I've noticed about Inverary, apart from the fact that the, the pier is closed at the moment, um, is that I didn't see a baker's in the town. Okay, it's just a small town, but I, I, you know, unless I've missed it, I didn't see a baker's. Um, I, I didn't see a butcher's either. In fact, Inverary is a wee bit like Calendar, and there's just a lot of tourist shops selling all manner of touristy stuff, from whisky to tweed jackets and stuff like that. I mean. I mean, can you imagine living in a place that doesn't have a baker's, so it doesn't make its own bread, and the bread and everything else that you need has to get brought in by road? And, um, you know, if you've come by bus from Glasgow, and, uh, as I did this morning, that's quite a thin, windy road that isn't great for huge vehicles and there was plenty of huge vehicles, some of which will undoubtedly have been carrying bread for the inhabitants of Inverary. I mean, it used to be the case that towns and villages were pretty much self-sufficient, you know. Okay, there was obviously a bit of trade between towns and trade to far-flung places, but in general, each location, a town or village was pretty self-sufficient. You know, they had a baker that they made bread, they had a butcher who would have took meat, there would have probably been some sort of grocers or whatever, for all sorts of, all manner of things that you would eat and use, and even a shoemaker. And it's a rather sad reflection of how society in Scotland and other places has progressed, and that we no longer have a baker in Inverary and indeed in lots of other places. And now the citizens have uh, got, got to get their bread from, I noticed a co-op just along the road there, and the co-op would get that bread from some far-flung place, as I say, delivered by a huge lorry. No wonder the roads are chock-a-block.
I don't think I've ever been in Inverary Castle. And to be honest, I would like to have a look at it. Uh, it's, I think it's in the hands of the, the Duke of Argyll and has been in the hands of the Dukes of Argyll for many years, centuries. Um, the Campbells. And the Campbells, as a clan in Scotland, have not always been liked all the time by everyone. Indeed, there are probably certain people, even today, who would hold a grudge against the Campbells and quite simply hate them for things they have done in the past. Even though those things happened a long time ago and many generations ago. And you know, lots of bad things happened in the past. And it's very hard to imagine uh, feelings of loathing or hatred being passed down the generations to those living many centuries later, but with regard to the Campbells, that, I'm afraid, is the case. They've just done a number of things to upset too many people. Um, in 1692, for example, you know, they were involved, heavily involved in the, the massacre at Glencoe, when uh, their hosts, the McDonalds, uh, were slaughtered. Um, pretty much part and parcel of a, a government thing. And uh, the Campbells have always been on the side of the, the government, the British government and the, the Union. They fought for government forces at Culloden. Uh, but it's, it's not just that, I mean... Um, Inverary, the town of Inverary, used to be um, quite near the castle. It's not. It, it, it didn't used to be where it is now. And uh, the then Duke of Argyll, I think it was Archibald, uh, decided um, he didn't want the castle. Uh, sorry, he didn't want the village of Inverary just so close to his castle, which I think he was in the process of renovating or rebuilding or something like that. And um, so he demolished Inverary. Okay, there was a, a great show about rebuilding it. And there's no doubt that the Inverary of today, which is what he, he built, is a lovely place. It's got a, I mean, Inverary's tiny, it's really just a village, but it very much looks like a small town, given the, that frontage that he constructed. But you know, I'm always a kind of cynical person and I, I don't know the full details, but there is a part of me that thinks, okay, the old Inverary was demolished, I think it was in the 1840s, and I think they probably started building the new Inverary in its current location, probably about a decade later. And I'm thinking, okay, so where did all the people who lived in Inverary go in that intervening 10 or so years? And call me a cynical old codger if you want, but I strongly suspect that they were sort of turfed out. A kind of, some sort of strange version of the Highland Clearances. And I think the Duke of Argyll, Archibald, who uh, moved in the area, maybe didn't like the smell of the occupants at the time or something, I don't know. Maybe he regarded the occupants of Inverary as savages or barbarians. And he thought, right, we'll just move this shower. I think this building here is part of uh, the lime kilns. Um, yeah, and, and I think that the Duke of Argyll, Archibald, got a lot of money from the British government. And, and what, I can't remember exactly what it was for. Perhaps it was just something to do with, do with his allegiance 
to the Crown and support for the, the Union or something, I don't know. And they moved and rebuilt Inverary and carried out a number of improvements in the area. And of course a lot of these improvements would have involved roads. And at that time, mid 18th century, after Culloden, it was important to build the good roads so that uh, the British Army could move about Scotland and make sure there was no more Jacobites lurking in the uh, plotting any more rebellions. Yeah. But even in recent times, I think in 1992, the then the Duke of Argyll, I think it was Ian Campbell on national television, said how he, he, he was quite pleased with the result of Culloden and that it um, put to an end sort of 400 years of this Highland nonsense. And um, just, uh, I used the word barbarism. You know, obviously, as far as he was concerned and the British government, they tamed these Highland savages. I suppose in the same way that in America they tamed the Red Indian. And to be honest, I think I would have preferred not to have been tamed and brought kicking and screaming into the civilised world. This is the feelings of an old dead wood about it. Most of the trees are covered in some kind of mossy stuff that seems to be strangling them. I think we're getting near the top. It was a little bit steeper than... Uh, it was just... it was... Uh, a bit steeper than I thought, yeah. I'm knackered. Okay, that's definitely, that's it. Uh, we're kind of, oh my goodness, right. Uh, oh, goodness me. I've been up here once before. Um, But with time, you tend to forget just how beautiful some things are. Oh, God. And this is just beautiful. Well, that's us on top of that small hill, and this is where the video is going to end. Um, the old tower is not as old as the phrase old tower might uh, lead you to believe. I think it just dates to the mid 18th century or something like that. Bit of a folly or a, a viewpoint or whatever you might want to call it. And as you can see, I mean, the views down towards Inveraria are just uh, out of this world. The sun seems to have disappeared, it's a wee bit overcast at the moment, but uh, you just can't beat a good cloud, you know. And it's seen like this that, as I perhaps uh, said earlier, that pretty much attracts people to Scotland. This is what they come here for, the scenery, and all the other sort of little bits and pieces, the add-ons like boats and jetties and shops and stuff. 
these are all important. Um, but it is ultimately the scenery that is the, the main attraction. So, as I said earlier, um, hit that subscribe button. There's lots of exploring to do this year. This is the first of many. I'm Eddie Burns. I hope to see you again.